a vaccine introduced a decade ago to combat HPV, the sexually transmitted virus that causes cervical cancer, has already reduced the virus's prevalence in teenage girls by almost two thirds. Well, around 14 million Americans become infected with HPV every year. And this can lead to all sorts of cancers, including cervical cancer, mouth and throat cancer. The American Cancer Society has estimated 4,120 women will die of cervical cancer this year, even for women in their early 20s, which is a group that has lower vaccination rates. The most dangerous strains of HPV have been reduced by more than a third with this vaccine. There's still a struggle, though, when it comes to any vaccine uh, in terms of the controversy over parents uh, wanting to have full control over what goes into their children. Mm. This vaccine is showing tremendously successful uh, results. Two thirds of teenagers uh, that are given this vaccine are, are now not getting HPV. The, the rates have, have gone down by two thirds. Mm. The vaccine, however, this is where the problems come in. It uh, works best when it's given to teenagers just prior to the start of their sexual activity. So it's uh, uh, being given to teenagers between the ages of 13 to 17. If it's given to adults slightly older than that in their, in their early 20s, it still works very well. But the best results are for 13 to 17 year olds prior to the commencement of their sexual activity. A lot of parents in parts of America are worried about giving their children of this age uh, a vaccine that is all about uh, sexual health because they feel that it might promote uh, sexual promis promiscuity. So uh, that, that's one of the big problems here. But we're talking about the fact that this is something that causes cancer. Mm -hmm. 27,000 uh, people a year are getting cancer from HPV. And this seems to be a very successful way of completely curbing that. Yeah, no, sure. And I think you're right. The, the, the partisan politics and the misinformation of partisan politics, which has got into this or has, has attached itself to this, is somewhat inevitable given the nature, as you said, of that we're talking about people's sexual health, sexual activity, particularly sexual activity and sexual health of women, where it then, then becomes even more politicized and the, the right gets even more animated about it. The two big criticisms or the two big fears rather that are thrown around, which research shows there are no indications there's any validity to them are is number one, safety. So is the vaccine safe? Answer yes. And does it lead to increased sexual activity in those women, particularly women who have received the vaccine or women who have received the vaccine? And again, the re research shows that it ha did not sh demonstrate there was, no, there was no indications that there was increased sexual activity having had or having received the vaccine. And doctors are trying to find a way around this by introducing it as a, a vaccine that basically prevents certain types of cancers rather than talking about it as something that prevents sexually transmitted diseases right. when you're talking about youngsters. But let's not forget, we're not just preventing cancer. We're also preventing effectively cancer or the strain of HPV that leads to cancer from being passed between people. So the more, you know, the, the the bigger the rates of cutting this out at the earliest level, you know, the, the most successful we can be. And it's not just about women. Let me just make this straight. Um, throat cancers, um, mm -hmm. neck cancers are really increasing. Uh, throat cancer alone related to HPV is growing up to 5% a year. It's particularly prevalent in men. And 20% percent of patients with HPV related throat cancer will die within five years. So the stats mm. are high. And this is one way that death can be reduced. Right, right. But unfortunately, I think it's going to be very, very difficult, particularly in this country, to get that to reduce that gap between public health concerns and, and rational, rationality and the extreme right and the evangelical right uh, or just conservative thinking people because they will just make that inevitable link between what if you're not out there having sex and you're not going to contract HPV in the in the first place and if I'm effectively giving you an, a, to a vaccine that means you're not going to contract it then you're going to just going to go run off and do whatever you want because you know you've got that safety net and you're protected so it, 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 trying to close that gap is going to be increasingly difficult, I can, I can envisage. Well, so far, Virginia, Rhode Island, and the District of Columbia are the only places in America where the HPV vaccine is required. 
Thousands and thousands of people are dying annually uh, from diseases that could have been prevented with this vaccine. We're now seeing tremendous results. Four strains of HPV covered by the vaccine have shown a decrease in 64% of HPV in girls between 14 and 19 years of age. We know President Barack Obama wants to do everything to remove cancer from America or from the world uh, as one of his legacies. So perhaps this can be something that he pushes forward.